Off the coast of England, in the vast expanse of the North Sea, lies a truly unique nation. This isn't your typical country with sprawling landscapes or bustling cities. Instead, it's a small platform standing defiantly against the waves. It's not marked on most maps, and you won't find it in many geography books. In fact, many people have never even heard of it. Yet, it exists, quietly asserting its presence in the vast ocean. This is the Principality of Sealand, a country that could fit on a football field. Imagine a nation so small, yet so determined to maintain its sovereignty. Sealand isn't your typical country. It doesn't have rolling hills or dense forests. Instead, it has a unique charm, a testament to human ingenuity and resilience. It's a platform originally built for the Second World War, now home to a handful of people. These residents have embraced a life of isolation and independence, turning a wartime relic into a symbol of freedom. But don't let its size fool you. Sealand has weathered many storms, both literal and metaphorical. Its residents go about their daily lives, undeterred by the challenges they face. Sealand has a history as big as any nation, filled with ambition, conflict and a persistent fight for independence. From its declaration of independence in 1967 to various attempts to seize control, Sealand's story is one of resilience and determination. How can such a small place even be considered a country? What makes a nation? Is it the land, the people, or the spirit of independence? What are the requirements for a nation to be recognized? And does Sealand meet them? These questions challenge our understanding of what it means to be a country. Sealand may be small, but its story is a powerful reminder that size isn't everything when it comes to national identity. Sealand's story begins in the turbulent years of World War II, a time when the world was engulfed in conflict and nations were scrambling to defend their shores. The structure that would become this unusual nation was built as a sea fort, a part of a strategic network designed to protect England from the looming threat of German invasion. These forts were equipped with anti-aircraft guns and manned by soldiers standing as silent sentinels against the enemy. After the war, these forts were largely abandoned, their purpose fulfilled, and their strategic importance diminished. Left to the mercy of the sea, they began to deteriorate, battered by relentless waves and harsh weather. That's where Roy Bates enters the picture, a man with a vision and a dream. I was looking for a base for my pirate radio station, a place where I could broadcast freely without the constraints of government regulations. In 1967, I claimed the abandoned fort, seeing it as the perfect location for my endeavors. I christened it Sealand and declared myself Prince Roy, envisioning a new kind of nation. My vision? A nation free from the restrictions and regulations of the mainland, a place where freedom and independence could thrive. Bates's declaration was more than just a publicity stunt. It was a bold statement of sovereignty and self-determination. He saw an opportunity to create a haven, a sanctuary in the middle of the sea. A place where people could live by their own rules, free from the constraints of traditional governments. Was this a whimsical dream or a legitimate claim to nationhood? The world watched with a mix of scepticism and curiosity as Sealand began to take shape. Over the years, Sealand developed its own symbols of nationhood, including passports, currency and stamps, further solidifying its claim. It even established its own constitution and legal system, striving to function as a fully independent state. Life on Sealand was unique with its residents embracing the challenges and opportunities of living on a man-made island. The media took an interest and Sealand's story captured the imagination of people around the world. Today, 
Sealand stands as a testament to one man's dream and the enduring spirit of independence. Though Roy Bates has passed away, his legacy lives on in the form of this tiny, resilient nation. Sealand continues to inspire those who believe in the power of self-determination and the possibility of creating something new from the remnants of the past. Life on Sealand is unlike anywhere else in the world. Imagine living on a platform surrounded by the sea, miles from the nearest town. Supplies are brought in by boat, electricity is generated by diesel generators, and communication with the outside world relies on satellite internet. Yet, Sealand functions. We have our own flag, stamps, and even a national anthem. While our permanent population rarely exceeds a handful of people, Sealand has issued passports and claims a global citizenry of thousands. Is this enough to be considered a real country? Can a nation exist solely on the basis of self-declaration and a handful of citizens? Section 4. A Test of Sovereignty The German Incident Sealand's claim to nationhood faced a serious challenge in 1978. This was a pivotal moment in the history of the self-proclaimed micronation, testing the resolve and legitimacy of its founders. A group of German businessmen, claiming a dispute with the Bates family, attempted to take control of the platform. Their motives were complex, involving both personal grievances and broader geopolitical implications. The incident escalated, with shots fired and a German citizen taken hostage. This dramatic turn of events highlighted the volatile nature of Sealand's existence and the lengths to which its defenders were willing to go. This wasn't just a minor maritime dispute. It was a full-blown crisis that drew international attention and raised questions about the very concept of micronations. It was a test of Sealand's sovereignty. The platform's isolation in the North Sea became both a symbol of its independence and a point of vulnerability. The German government protested the hostage situation, putting pressure on Britain to intervene. Diplomatic channels buzzed with activity as both nations navigated this unprecedented situation. However, Britain claimed it had no jurisdiction over Sealand, citing the platform's location outside of British territorial waters. This stance underscored the legal ambiguities surrounding Sealand's status. The German government eventually negotiated the hostages' release, implicitly recognising Sealand's autonomy. This negotiation was a delicate dance of diplomacy, with both sides keenly aware of the broader implications. This incident, while tense, solidified Sealand's claim as an independent entity. The platform stood resilient, a testament to the determination of its inhabitants. But does a lack of interference from other nations equate to official recognition? The Sealand incident remains a fascinating case study in international law and the limits of state sovereignty. Over the years, Sealand has continued to assert its independence, issuing passports, currency and even hosting its own internet domain. These actions, while symbolic, reinforce its claim to nationhood. The Bates family, who have lived on the platform for decades, remain steadfast in their belief in Sealand's sovereignty. Their story is one of resilience, innovation, and a unique vision of what a nation can be. The German incident is a reminder of the complexities of international waters and the ever-evolving nature of maritime law. It challenges us to think about the definitions of nationhood and the power dynamics at play in the world's oceans. As the sun sets over the North Sea, Sealand stands as a beacon of defiance and a testament to the human spirit's quest for autonomy. The German incident may have been a test, but it also marked the beginning of a new chapter in Sealand's ongoing story. Section 5. Sealand's Digital Frontier Passports and Cryptocurrency Sealand, despite its physical limitations, has always embraced innovation. 
In the digital age, this has translated into a unique approach to citizenship and finance. Sealand offers digital citizenship, allowing individuals to become citizens without residing on the platform. Furthermore, Sealand has 